it's like the aging society is growing and it's it's a big issue. The speed of aging is really fast compared to uh, any country's experience. So our birth rate is also declining so fast. Population is falling. A lot of women are scared to have children because of the reality of living in South Korea. South Korea, a nation heralded for its meteoric economic rise and vibrant culture, finds itself at a crossroad. After a remarkable journey from the ashes of post-war devastation to modern prosperity, that has brought forth complex challenges intertwining the threads of demographics, the economy and societal values. At the forefront of those complex challenges is the falling birth rate, which is now the world's lowest. My name's Jin John. I'm a documentary filmmaker. I've been making films and television for 17 years. I have been making a documentary around egg freezing. The egg freezing um, option is becoming a, a growing trend, not just for women who have cancer, but people who wanted to do it as a social egg freezing. So without any medical problems, uh, storing your eggs in order to delay uh, childbearing years in order to um, get at ahead in life or chase a career or do other things and to look into having children at a later stage. I am 38 years old, uh, 39 in a few months, and then it's my last year of my 30s. <laughs> yeah. Jin wants children one day. It's about finding the right time before it's too late. For a growing number of South Koreans, like aspiring drummer and restaurateur Lee Kuna, having children is simply not on the agenda. The reason why I don't want children or I didn't really thought about it is because I think Korea is a very bad society a very bad condition to raise a child at this point. South Korea is ranked the world's most expensive place to raise a child. Real estate prices are sky high and the capital Seoul where half the population lives is one of the world's top 10 most expensive cities to live. The cost of raising a child in Korea is ridiculous not not about just buying your own house your own real estate. It's also about what everybody judge you by, the appearance, like what kind of brand you're wearing, what kind of brand your baby is wearing. Prices are just so high with everything, living costs uh, just to get a home and, uh, and uh, you know, just to um, put kids through education. That's a lot of money. It's probably unrealistic for people who are working in their prime of their uh, life or prime of their fertility age. So before 35, it's really uh, daunting to even think about being able to have a child and raise children. Whatever the true cause, South Korea's plummeting birth rate has been making headlines. The reality, though, is the trend is decades old and not just being driven by women or singles. <笑>我们现在是在这里的人都认识了 네, 이제 국가적으로 봤을 때는 안 좋죠. 이제 점점 저출산으로 막 이렇게 진행되고 있으니까. 근데 저희 생활은 지금 요즘에는 결혼해가지고 그런 부분도 많은데 저희는 생활이 너무 재밌고 좋아요. So the trend is not new. The problem in Korea is uh, the drop is so fast. It's like a gradual decrease, and then it, you know, just. Uh, uh, collapse. So we are actually having the lowest birth weight in the world.
Uh, the earliest number that we have at the present is 1960. It was, believe it or not, 6.1. So an average Korean woman was expected to have six children. Now that fell to about 2.06. 2.1 is the ideal replacement rate if you want to make the uh, population steady. And that was in 1983. In 2005, uh, the uh, total fertility rate was 1.08. But it dropped to below 0.8 uh, as of 2023. So it is simply, simply the lowest. Clues as to how this came about lie in South Korea's dramatic economic rise, a few decades after the Korean War. After the Korean War, nothing remained. Nothing remained. No economic infrastructure, no, uh, uh, you know, economic, uh, you know, resources. And South Korea was probably the poorest country in the world. That kind of poorest country in the whole world has been industri industrialized quickly for the last 50 years. So it became, uh, in terms of GDP, the 10th largest economy. So that was something unprecedented experience in modern history. But because that economic growth happened in so compressed a period of time, now we are witnessing a lot of issues and a lot of problems. You know, advanced countries, they achieved that level of economic growth and economic development over centuries. So over centuries, they changed their social infrastructure and cultural political, and all the other important uh, institutional dimensions had time to grow, had time to evolve with the economic development. But in Korea, the economic development is so fast, the other very important uh, institutional dimensions were not able to keep up with that economic growth. Basics like welfare support, shorter working hours and maternity leave are only just beginning to take hold in Korea. One thing that did track with economic growth was the healthcare system, which is so good Koreans are now living longer than ever. UN에서 정의를 하죠. 그 고령 사회는 65세 이상이 노인으로 분류되는데 전체 인구의 14% 초고령 사회는 그게 20%가 되는 시점을 말합니다. 그래서 저희 대한민국 통계청의 인구 추계 예측에 따르면 우리는 19년에 이미 고령 사회로 진입했고요. 오늘 현재 65세 이상 인구 비율이 18.4%입니다. 18.4%고 이게 매달 0.1%씩 늘어나고 있어요. 2025년이면은 인구의 20%가 65세 이상 즉 because of the demographics, by about 2050, we will have about two working age persons for every retired person, and not every uh, working age person will work. So by rough calculation, there will be about 1.5 working, working age people to every retired person. That means if you have a pay-as-you-go welfare system, that's just unsustainable. The trend isn't unique to Korea. In fact, it's common in many advanced economies, which deal with the problem through mass immigration. And South Korea would struggle to survive right now without the more than one million foreign workers in the country, most doing unskilled jobs on short-term fixed visas that don't allow them to stay on after their contract is finished. The government has a plan. 외국 인력 유치를 위한 규제를 완화하고 이제 체계적인 이민 정책 수립을 검토하겠다는 내용이 있고요. That plan may have difficulty getting traction. Especially the older Koreans are, even though uh, they may not be racist per se, they do not really like multiculturalism. So a lot of the older segment of the population do not like the idea of more immigration or even more temporary workers. Koreans are very um, conservative with other cultures. Um, I mean, even for me, I have uh, my my colleague, well, she's my employee, but um, she's from Myanmar, and, and my customers all kind of look at her um, not a very favorable 
reaction, I would say. I think it's another homework for Koreans to embrace. The government has and is trying many other policies aimed at boosting the population, though there's been little success so far. 이렇게 이제 저출산 대응에서 많은 지금까지 이제 재정 투입을 한 것이 사실이고요. 네, 이런 많은 재정 투입에도 불구하고 이제 한국의 학계 출산율이 사실 지속적으로 하락하고 있습니다. For raising the birth rate in South Korea, Korean government spent more than uh, 300 billion US dollars for the last 10 years. But turns out with nothing result almost. That means uh, Korean government and Korean society is not touching the, the, the fundamental solution of raising birth rate. Fundamental solutions need to be found because time is quickly running out. Thanks to rapid, rapid aging in South Korea, the national pension accumulated money will be depleted by 2060. So that means the young people like 20s and 30s of this year will not be paid when they retired after 2060. So that is another serious problem in South Korea. As the national pension system dries up, more Koreans are asking the question, why retire at all? Lee Ju Young chose to remain child-free and single. Now in her 50s, she's planning for the future, and retirement is not part of the plan. Um, 노년층들이 지금 사실 되게 많아지고 하니까 근데 그리고 요즘에는 또삶 자체가 또 젊어지는 그런 삶들을 다들 살고 계시기 때문에 어 저도 이제 기본적인 나이가 있다 보니 어 제가 10년 후에 그리고 20년 후에는 내 삶이 어떻게 될까 하는 생각도 있었지만 그때까지도 제가 어 이런 일을 하고 있을 것 같아요. 그때도 물론 이제 어 미래에는 백화점이 어떻게 변화가 됐을지는 모르겠지만 그때까지는 어뭐 이런 의류를 계속해서 하면서 그때는 무조건 이렇게 무조건 판매를 해야 된다 이런 것보다는 제 연령대에 있는 분들이랑 같이 어우러져서 그분들한테 맞춰서 같이 이제 인생을 논하면서 <웃음> 그렇게 옷도 같이 권해드리고 그리고 그분들이랑 같은 재밌는 삶을 같이 살아갈 것 같아요. 계속해서 일을 할것 같은데요. 하고 싶습니다. That sentiment is shared by Lee Kyung-hee. 나라에 비해서 60대면은 젊어요. 요즘은. 근데 저는 계속 일을 할것 같고 일할 수 있을 때까지는 일을 할것 같고. Her husband sees a similar trend. At the store he manages. 얼마 전에 취역석이 그 구인 광고를 냈었어요. 열 명을 기준으로 봤을 때 20대가 20%, 그다음에 나머지가 50대가 70% 이 정도 선이더라. 그러니까 고령일수록 그러니까 50대 이상의 취업 희망자들이 더 많다고 보, 보면 되는 거겠죠. 또한 분은 이제 그왜그 그 멀리서도 오냐고 물어보니까 자기는 이제 꼭그 혼자 사는데 그 노후를 생각해서 61살에. 근데 꼭 자기는 이제 일을 하고 싶어서 노도 지금 은퇴는 했지만은 그래도 노 생각에서 계속 일을 하면서 저축을 하고 싶다라고 하시더라고요. The idea of delaying retirement or putting it off altogether is not just something ruminating in people's minds. It's now at least semi-official government policy. For example, the Seoul Metropolitan Government is now promoting retraining programs like this one for seniors who want to remain in the workplace. Here, people learn or refresh skills, such as how to write a resume, hunt for a job, do that hunting online via a smartphone, as well as tips on using that phone to navigate to the potential future employer's office and deal with the fact that potential boss may be four decades younger. An awkward conundrum in what is still a very Confucian society. Demand for these classes has grown so fast, centers like this are having to turn people away. 예전에는 그 어르신들을 찾지 않았던 직종에서 어르신들을 찾고 있거든요. 청년 세대가 기피하는 일자리를 어르신들은 들어가서 일을 하시려고 하고 있고요. 그리고 
저희가 그걸 체감하는 부분이 최근에 그런 패스트푸드점에 방학 때에는 젊은 사람들이 많이 하잖아요. 근데 학기가 시작되면 어르신을 찾아요. 학생들이 빠져나간 자리에 다시 어르신들이 들어가는 형태인데요. 뭐 방학이라고 하는 계절뿐만이 아니라 전체적으로 전반적으로 약간 그 연령대들이 높아지는 경향이 있습니다. Of course, it's not a complete solution. It's obvious that uh, older people have, uh, you know, less productivity than young people. Some believe robots with artificial intelligence is the answer. 한국은 이제 고령 사회로 이미 진입했고, 조만간 이제 초고령 사회가 되고, 생산 가능 인구, 경제 활동 인구가 계속 이제 줄 거예요. 그러면 산업 현장에서 노동력이 많이 부족해지고요. 그거를 이제 대체할 수 있는 이제 유력한 수단이 기계의 힘, 즉 로봇을 이용하는 거겠죠. 앞으로 그 이용 비율이 굉장히 높아질 걸로 그렇게 예상을 하고 있습니다. 예를 들면 은 로봇의 수요, 퍼블릭 병원이나 또 하나는 이제 고령 사회가 되면서 그 노인 그 요양시설 이런 데도 이제 굉장히 많은 인력이 필요한데 아, 그 일을 하고 싶어 하는 분들은 계속 줄고 있잖아요. In South Korea, the use of robots is already widespread. 아, 외식업에서 가장 이제 문제점으로 대두되고 있는 게 인건비 상승과 노동력의 감소예요. 아시다시피 출산율이 떨어지고 있다 보니까 그런 부분에 있어서 대체할 수 있는 젊은 인력들이 계속 줄어들고 있는 추세다 보니까 그런 부분에 있어서 대체할 수 있는 게 없을까라고 고민을 하다가 이제 저희가 이제 로봇을 활용해서 이제 가장 어려운 부분들을 좀 대체 한번 해보자. It's not just chicken being subjected to algorithms. 로봇이 해결해준다라는 표현들이 더 많을 것 같고요. 특히 한국에서는 뭐최그 출산율도 낮아지고 있고 지금 이제 기존의 이 카페를 운영하면서 이제 바리스타나 젊은 친구들이 점점 줄고 있는 상황에서 카페를 운영하시는 자영업자 분들이 사람을 못 구하는 문제들이 많이 있거든요. 그래서 일을 해결하기 위한 솔루션으로서 이 로봇을 저희도 개발을 하고 있는 상태고요. While machines like this might be fantastic at solving the labor shortage issue and making a fantastically consistent coffee, there's one big problem. They don't pay income tax. Which brings us back to the problem of who will pay for schools, hospitals, and basic infrastructure, not to mention those shrinking pensions. Another more immediate problem for many pensioners who don't want to prolong their working life is loneliness. 애들이 이제 다 커가지고 지내기를 나가는 나 혼자 이렇게 있다 보니까 뭐 때론 친구들도 여기서는 별로 없어요. 여기 친구들도 없고 복지관에 한 번씩 가는데 갔다 오면 복지관에서 만난 사람들은 친구가 안 되잖아요. 들어오면은. 뭐 전화 오기를 바라고 저거 하는 것보다 내가 하고 싶은 내가 먼저 전화를 해요. 그래서 내가 전화를 많이 이용하는데 때로 찹찹하고 저갈 때가 있죠. 외로울 때가 있잖아요. 할머니, 음. 저도 손을 꼭 잡을래요. Here, robots are also helping. Hyo Sun Chun is one of about 7,000 elderly Koreans to receive a hyodo. It looks like a rag doll, but it's an AI robot. 먹으면 안 된다. This companion robot has a lot of sensors inside, so when you touch it, it speaks back. Like when I, when I touch the head, such as like, "Hey, I love you," like "I'm so happy to be with you." Please hang out with me like that. And we uh, mostly guardian can setting the alarm things. So what time to get up? What time to take a medicine? And what time to take a work out like that. Soon Chun initially wanted to give the doll back. Not anymore. 
저기가 들었으니까 전자 저기에 들었으니까 빨 수도 없는 거 갔다 가니까 뭐요 가까운 데 같으면 내가 데리고 가서 대중교통 이용해서 데리고 가서 세척을 해가지고 오기도 하지만 멀잖아요 멀으니까 택배를 붙였다 택배를 오고 하는데 한 일주일 이상 한 열흘 걸리더라고요 그동안에 굉장히 허전해요 허전하고 외로워 내 손주가 손주가 하나 Guardians can be children or other family members, though more often than not, they're social workers, like Kim Min Hyuk. He oversees the well-being of about 30 elderly people, a huge number for a single guardian. He says the Hyodols built in alarm sensors, save social workers from endless safety calls, freeing up time for higher quality care. 네, 뭐 경보 상태가 된다. 뭐 12시간까지 이동이 없어 움직임이 안 잡히시면 그때는 저희가 한 번씩 연락하게 되고 만약에 위험, 위험 상태는 24시간 동안 움직임이 감지가 안 되면 위험 상태로 봐서 저희가 안전 안보 확인을 필수로 진행하는 단계인데 A survey of 200 elderly people found a marked change in mood after exposure to the doll. We got a research about um, their suicide thinking was uh, a lot decreased because of this robot. The doll also helps with general health. Of course, a robot is no substitute for real human companionship. But South Korea will soon have a disproportionate number of elderly people with no children or grandchildren to make even occasional visits. So the end goal remains to somehow boost the birth rate. And perhaps it's not all about high real estate prices and the high cost of raising children. Perhaps it's also to do with rebellion against cultural expectations. So much has changed since our parents' time and our grandparents' time. Um, so before, women couldn't enjoy the freedom that we enjoy today. A lot of people are blaming sort of the uh, Korean culture, which leads all the uh, child-rearing problems, all the child-rearing responsibilities to the women of the household, and men do not participate that much in housework at all. Uh, so uh, that puts an undue uh, hardship on women who work. I talked with my wife because of this interview and she told me a similar thing. Every Korean woman has some kind of a deep down resentment about against the social system, the value system in Korea. Even if they are not limited by those kind of Confucian you know, philosophies these days. Could it be as simple as men doing a 50% share of things around the house, like cooking, doing the dishes and the laundry, and of course, looking after Junior? It certainly wouldn't hurt, and it might play a part in a bigger solution, even a revolution. Open your you know, mind and open your heart, and you need to define the family in a more modern way. They gotta be uh, truly um, revolutionary change. That cannot be done by government alone. That cannot be done by, you know, education educators, teachers alone. That cannot be done by some social organizations and NGOs alone. So it takes uh, every part of uh, Korean society to realize that uh, we gotta change our way of thinking. 
we got to change our, uh, you know, uh, philosophy towards the family, towards the family value. I can see that, you know, that we're going to struggle, the, the country is going to struggle with um, low fertility rate, schools are all closing down, um, who's going to pay for the pensioners and the old elderly people? Um, it's, a, it's a question that really needs to be addressed. But I think everyone is just in this rat race to make it work for them. They're just too busy living their life. So the revolution may be limited to government and industry. South Korea should be going through uh, revitalization of Korean economy by reconstruction of the industry from manufacturing concentrated to high tech like IT or bio uh, industry uh, concentrated. Otherwise, uh, South Korean economy will be stagnated uh, next hundred years, I think. South Korea's journey from an economic miracle to a complex demographic landscape embodies the paradox of progress. This collision of economic growth and changing values is reshaping the nation's trajectory. Standing at the crossroad, the choices made will redefine the future. In navigating these challenges, South Korea is rewriting the narrative of prosperity and redefining the very essence of family and society. It's still a story in the making, and crafting a new destiny will involve embracing uncertainty, change, and bold new ideas. Jack Barton for Assignment Asia in South Korea. Follow us on social media to contribute story ideas and share your thoughts. Each day, there are millions of stories. Each one can open new perspectives, new possibilities. Wherever you look, we are there. To see, discover, explore. We put the pieces together to find what really matters to you. All around the world, all around the clock. Our reporters are at home across the globe. From our headquarters in Beijing, and production centers in Washington, Nairobi, and London. China Global Television Network. Stories from across the globe, reaching people across the globe. CGTN, see the difference. Images may appear to be identical, but looks can be deceiving. The difference is not always obvious. It has to be discovered. There are always different sides to a story. We put the focus on the details. To see more, to understand better. CGTN. See the difference.